So, so there are two kinds of voting obviously if there's a hard there would be a soft voting so what is hard voting hard voting is voting the voting classifier basically takes account of the majority of the uh, base learner predictions right the class majority class and in soft voting what you do is slightly different instead of taking the class output as it is you're going to talk about the probabilities and you're going to somehow aggregate the probabilities directly first instead of in the first case, what did we do? In, we had probabilities, we applied a threshold, we came to a class decision and then we kind of uh, somehow aggregated the class decisions, right? If that is hard voting. In case of soft voting, what you do is take the probabilities as it is and then somehow combine them, right? So let me now show you what is that, right? So this is called hard voting. What is soft voting? In soft voting, you are directly dealing with this probabilities, right? So these are the probabilities that you're going to deal with. So then you are going to say your probability of final prediction of it belonging to class one is average of all five probs. Right? So what does that average look like? 0 0.6 plus 0 0.51 plus 0 0.01 plus 0.1 plus 0.6 by 5 so average comes out to be Yeah, 1.82 by 5. What is that finally? 0.36 roughly. Roughly around 0.36, right? So what does this, then you, if your probability of final class is 1, then you would going to say that if probability is 0.36, now again assuming a rational threshold of 0.5, you would say that final prediction is no, right? Because it's less than 0.6. So what is, what is the thing that changed from final, this was hard voting and this is what you call soft voting. So what is the thing that changed here? So your prediction here was yes, your prediction here is no, right? The prediction changed from hard voting to soft voting. Why is that so? Because you clearly can see there were models, the ones which predicted a class one were high, slightly confident, right? They were slightly higher than 0.5. And that's why you had class prediction as one, right? Whereas the models which were saying that it's no, it's a negative class. They were screaming it loudly, right? Because they had probabilities which were extremely low, 0 0.01 and 0 0.1. So even though you had two models which were extremely confident, they were so even though there were two models which were extremely confident that it's a negative class, because there were three models which were slightly confident that it's a positive model. In case of hard voting, you got an answer which is yes. In case of soft voting, when you finally combine the probability, you see the actual result is that, okay, probably you should not go ahead with that, right? So what does this kind of give you an intuition? This gives you an intuition that probably at most of the time, soft voting is something which is more effective than hard voting. Now let's see an example and understand that. So obviously I've already explained to you what is soft voting, what is hard voting. And in general, soft voting has been observed to perform better than hard voting. And I just showed you how, right? So now, so all of this are obviously, uh, they are implemented in scikit like most of the other things that are there. And you can clearly directly try and implement them straight up from here. So then you first have to import your logistic regression and then your two decision trees right so now in this case we are building an ensemble of three models and three models are one is logistic regression and two other decision trees right so we first import them and then you first so then this is a soft voting this is a hard voting classifier right so in hard voting classifier you first have to say which are the estimators and then whether the voting is to be hard or soft. Obviously, if you are doing soft voting, this particular parameter would change, right? Let's see that how. So now your accuracy is soft. So now you compare this, you see that 
hard and soft voting accuracies and you see soft voting accuracy in this particular case to be roughly almost similar to hard voting but it may not necessarily be always true right so now before we kind of jump there and jump ahead and talk about other things let's try and take out a moment to understand that what did we discuss here right so we discussed here there was initially one training data and we have trained multiple models on this right so m1 m2 m3 m4 and m5 and so we discussed the ways of aggregating them right so one obvious way was taking the majority of decisions so that is one the second is taking average of probabilities right so the first one so the first one is called hard voting the second one is called soft voting right and I'm, so you tend to think probably there are not more ideas covered because the slides are limited in terms of your uh, reach so but there are obviously much more different things that you can go ahead and do with this right so we are just talking about only a few ideas here right in the slides so but what are the other things that you can do with them right so and this is the part where it kind of gets creative and this is the part where you have to think out of the box you are probably thinking that all this while where is the part that you can apply your creativity so this is one of the processes right the first part of the process is kind of thinking apart from aggregating them via hard voting or soft voting what are the other things that you can do right so what are the other things that you probably can do right so instead of directly combining them you can do a weighted average right instead of giving taking a direct average you can do something like weighted average right so and how do you decide the weights it could be based on your error of each model so any model that has got high errors you give it a low weightage it could be based on accuracy any model that has got high accuracy you give it a higher weightage right so and similarly based on AUC or any other performance metrics right so you get the one one important concept of combining them right so the idea is basically you weigh based on uh, you know how your how each of your models are performing on the same data set right and based on that you kind of instead of giving each of those in case of soft voting you're giving them each of those models equal weightage right but it may not be necessarily true that you might need to give each of them same weightage right so you might tend to give more weightage to models which are better performing than the other ones right what are some of the other ways right uh, some of the other ways also include this right so clustering models based on probabilities so what do we so probably you don't understand what is clustering clustering is basically an idea where you're combining everything that looks similar into uh, different groups right so say you have model m1 and m2 which are very similar in their probability prediction so these are in one group m3 and m4 are in one group and m5 is in another group right so in this case you can clearly see that m5 is an outlier right so depending on that you can probably choose to directly eliminate m5 or you can say probably you can see the performances and then you can probably see that m5 is the only one which is performing really good the rest of them are not really performing that good so then you can just see performance and choose which cluster to eliminate right so clustering would basically put your models into different cluster based on how their probabilities look similar probability models would be belonging to similar clusters right so you could have a model which is exceptionally good right so that's why its probabilities look very different from the rest of the models and so you put them into a different bucket uh, and then you can see if the if this is the one which is really good and these four models are really not good you can kind of eliminate them right see performance and then eliminate what else could we do with the clustering of models right we can also do something where we say that okay there's no need for me to use m1 m1 and m2 are very similar right m1 and m2 are very similar so why not use something which is representative something which is an average of m1 m2 and again i see m3 
m3 and m4 are something which are very similar right so again i can use an average of those two so because what happens is if you are counting if you are using all of m1 m2 and m3 and m4 you are basically giving weightage to m1 m pro m1 or m2 probabilities which are very basically same you are giving it a weightage of 2 right you are again giving a weightage of 2 to probabilities from model m3 and m4 right so instead of doing that you might just want to because these are very similar models right so it's why double count each of them right so instead directly take an average right so you can take an average from both of them and then use this right so instead of using five models you would use three so what do you call this is called using cluster centroid so when i say cluster centroid i mean cluster centroid of this particular cluster right so that is basically nothing but average of m1 and m2 so using cluster centroid right so what are so these are these are again some of the ideas that we have just written down here apart from this what are other things that you can do with while combining probabilities right so we are going to be talking about some of those ideas are again listed down in the additional resources sections go through them and kind of figure out if you're having a problem go and ask your instructor but these are some of the very basic and obviously these are this might seem very basic and these are very intuitive but they're again widely applied in industry all throughout uh you know to kind of for all kind of ensembling purposes these are definitely some of the widely used techniques so just to keep in mind nave aggregation is nave obviously now you understand why it is nave right because you're just simply either taking majority or you're just simply combining averages right whereas there are multiple ways you can do it you can do weighted average where you take weights based on auc weights based on error based weights based on accuracy or you can do even something even more sophisticated you can try and figure out those weights by using a different machine learning algorithm we are going to be talking about something very similar to that in a while apart from all of that what else can you do with it right as i said you can cluster your models into different clusters and then basically see where which one to kind of go ahead with do you kind of take cluster centroids and you can not you can also not take cluster centroids you can take just directly if there's an outlier model kind of eliminate that so there are multiple options that you can do right so this is the part where it kind of goes out of the box right please try and think out of the box try and be as creative take your time out if you want to kind of here pause your video for a minute and kind of take your time out and think about what are the other things that you can do with it right definitely hard voting and soft voting are the most basic and the most naive things you can do no wonder the name naive aggregation right so given i'm hoping you would take out some time let's now jump on to the next part of the segment which is the idea of specialist right log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates